I am the founder and CEO of OneView, and uh, we are an IT procurement consultancy, and we've also built an IT contract management platform that's being used by some very large uh, companies across the globe. I mean, the way I got into the consulting was I was working in industry, I was a director, and, um, you know, I, I would hire consultants to come in and do the work that I didn't have the time to do. And I realized I can do this myself. So why not become my own consultant? I really didn't have a plan to, to actually have a consulting firm or even a software company. It was just, I want to work as an independent. And the challenge in the beginning was as an independent, I was going in and I'm bidding on work that some of the big guys are bidding on, but it's just me and nobody knows me uh, as the individual, as Mohammed Faraday coming in, uh, you know, wanting to do work when, you know, an Accenture or a CGI or even an IBM comes in, there's brand, there's recognition. And so there's this assumption of expertise with these large organizations. So, um, you know, I had to, I had to figure out how I could brand myself so that I would be top of mind with these large firms. Um, and so that's, that's what I was focusing on. And, and I didn't know how to do that. And really that's when you and I, uh, that's when, uh, you know, boutique growth and I kind of came together. Uh, I was looking for um, kind of that guidance on how do I actually create that brand that makes me stand out above the crowd, which is an incredibly difficult thing to do in consulting because, you know, the only thing more um, rampant in the world today than lawyers is consultants. <laughs> there's just, there's too many and it's hard. Like if I, if I say, hey, I need a consultant, People are like, yeah, okay, consultant for what? There's a consultant for everything. So how do you stand out in that crowd? Obviously, when you're starting out, the most important thing is you have to leverage your network. That's the only way you're going you're gonna to get off the ground, right? You, you can't advertise and create websites. I mean, that's not going to work. You have to leverage your network. Um, but if you're going to leverage your network, you need to grow your network. Because the bigger your network, the more you can leverage from it. So that's one thing that we worked on was how do we actually grow the network? And the way to grow the network is to establish our expertise. So I remember early on working with Petite Growth, one of the things we talked about was putting stuff out there that would establish, establish me as an expert in the industry. So in the beginning, and it was on LinkedIn, we used to do a lot of writing. I would write about certain topics. And the reality is if I'm going in as a consultant, if I really truly think I'm an expert, I should have a lot to talk about. If I don't have a lot to talk about, then I need to look in the mirror and ask myself, am I really an expert in this industry? Right? And, and, and that's, that's a hard reality for some people. They may think they're an expert, but if they don't have anything to talk about, maybe they should just go back to working a nine to five and become an expert. You know? And that's not a bad thing either. So I really started to pull from all of my experiences doing IT procurement and I started to write on different topics. And what that did was that created an audience. So people started looking and, and reading and saying, well, okay, th so this person knows what he's talking about. And then when they started reading my content and later when we started doing videos and watching my content, then those people I would add to my network. Now my network grows and then I can leverage that network to create business. I remember when this um, strategy of writing and doing videos on LinkedIn was actually working, was resonating. Um, when I got a call from one of our biggest clients, Indigo Books, um, I didn't go out looking for Indigo Books. I mean, at the time we were on the software side, we were just a fledgling company, but Indigo Books was going through something. A lot of clients are uh, in every industry. It doesn't matter what you're doing. So there's somebody out there that needs your help, right? So they were going through something, they needed some help and they had a consultant working for them who I had never met, I'd never talked to, but he'd seen some of my LinkedIn videos. So in a meeting, he told the Indigo executives like, hey, I, I saw this, this guy on LinkedIn, he was doing a video about contract management, you guys should probably call him, he, could, he might be able to help. And so they called me, I said, yeah, I have a product, I went in and showed it and within three weeks, I had them as a client one of our biggest clients and they've been with us for years now. And it was, and that's when it hit me. I said, wow, okay. People are not just watching these videos or reading this stuff for entertainment purposes because they got nothing better to do. They, 
these are real problems that I'm solving without even knowing it. And there's a real audience out there that I'm reaching and I'm affecting. And that, that was my big aha moment with, uh, with that strategy. Um, I remember um, there was a very large um, a database company in New York City. So they'd seen uh, some of my videos and through the videos they wanted to engage and they were interested in consulting work and they wanted to look at our software. And the conversations got to the point where they asked me to come to New York and meet them. So I go to New York, I go into this company and um, in one of the big Manhattan offices, I walk in, it's a boardroom and it's full of their executives. So their CIO, their CTO, a couple of SVPs, the director of procurement, director of finance. And so I walk in and I start, you know, I introduce myself and I and I'm go around shaking hands and they're they're smiling and they're like, yeah, you, you don't need to introduce yourself. We know exactly who you are. Apparently they had all watched my videos. Um, and this is this was before I really started to understand how to use things like LinkedIn Navigator and look at some of the analytics. Um, and then using the tools like lead feeder to see kind of who's coming to the website and who's viewing my videos. Then when I started to look at that, I was able to identify like, oh, okay, it's not just one person in a company. If one person in that company watches it, they're connected to 50 other people in that company who also then watch it. And out of those 50 people, there may be one or two who need help. The other 48 are saying, yeah, this is a great video. It's informative. But two or even one could be a potential prospect, right? Um, and, and that's when it really started to resonate. And there's been times now, I, I was at a dinner event a few months ago, and, and I'm sitting at a table, you know, these, these, uh, these gala dinners, they seat you with people you don't know. I'm sitting at this big table, 10 people at the table, and a guy across the table keeps staring at me and looks at the phone, looks at me, looks at this phone, looks at me. So finally I asked him, like, hey, uh, did, is everything okay? And he goes, he goes, yeah, you're the guy. I'm like, are you on LinkedIn? He's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's me. I do the videos. And he's like, yeah, I thought so. I thought you looked familiar, but it gets more embarrassing. So we chat a little. He goes, yeah, fantastic videos. This is great and everything. So I said, uh, you know, that's great. We should connect on LinkedIn and maybe chat. And his face just soured. And he looked at me. He said, yeah, we've been connected for six months. So that's the that's the other side of that double-edged sword, right? If you're going to have all these connections, you better know who they are or you're going to have egg on your face when uh, when you meet them in person, You're the fans, so to speak. The difference between going into a sales conversation where they don't know you versus going in and you know they've been watching your LinkedIn videos is a world of difference because it literally cuts out all of the preamble in the meeting. I don't have to tell them who I am, what I do, and how good I am at doing it. They already know it, or at least I assume they know it. I jump right into, okay, so you know what I do. Tell me what your problem is and let's figure out how to solve it. We don't need to talk about, you know, my name is Mohammed and I've been in the industry for 20 years and I did this, this, and this. They know all of that. They've seen the videos, right? And I'm not trying to sell them on my expertise anymore. That's been established. You know, my videos get, thousands of views. Those people that I'm talking to, they've commented on those videos. They've seen the videos. And that's a huge, huge leg up that I have on my competition. Even the biggest company like an, like a, an Accenture and SAP, when they go in with their consultants, they still have to prove to their clients that the consultants they're putting in front of them know what they're doing, which is why a lot of times I'm the consultant they put in front of them, which is also fine by me. It just increases my expertise that much more. So the power of this network that's built through LinkedIn with all of these contacts is now I can start thinking about other things that I want to do with my expertise and with my business. So we've got a software company. I have this network. If I need to sell the software, um, I can reach out to over 10,000 people. And these aren't just random people. These are more than 10,000 people that are decision makers within IT procurement. That's a very specific group. There aren't too many in the world to begin with, and I'm connected to over 10,000 of them. So if I need to sell my software, I can just go to the network and say, hey, I wanna talk to you about my software. I don't have to introduce myself. I don't have to say, you know, you need to listen to me because of X, Y, and Z. I don't need to do any of this. Say, hey, I wanna have a meeting with you. And nine times out of 10, when I ask 
somebody in my network for a meeting, if it's a call, or if I'm within their geographic location face-to-face, -face, nine times out of 10, they'll, they wanna meet. So that's one thing. The other thing is now I can look at other ways I want to develop myself. So I've got the software company, but I also do consulting work. And now I've been thinking about moving into like training and coaching. So I can access that network, first of all, to get feedback. Hey, I'm thinking about doing some training, doing some coaching, what do you think? And the responses I get back is invaluable because those would be my potential customers. So if they like it, then I know I'm on the right track. And then from there, I can even move into a different type of a network and go it further from there. So it's not just about getting to 10,000 or 20,000, it's the right people in the right industry decision makers and then you have to keep giving them something some content that will keep them interested in you and again it goes back to if you truly are an expert or the expert that you claim to be then you will have no shortage of um, information to give to your network and that'll cause it to grow in the beginning when i started to get some clients and i would go in and this is before i had published a lot of content um, one of my biggest challenges was I had to prove myself and, and I knew full well that I'm, I'm competing against the big guys. Right. Um, and sometimes what happens is, uh, you, this inferiority complex sets in. And so you start to second guess yourself. Um, and sometimes you make mistakes. Sometimes they don't hire you. And the, one of the toughest things is to keep pushing forward. Right. OK, fine. They didn't hire me. I'm going to keep doing my videos. I'm going to go to another meeting. They didn't hire me. I'm going to keep doing my videos. And I go to third meeting, fourth meeting. The fifth guy will hire me. And then when he hires me, and this is something that I, I tell my team as well, and, and I practice it as well. In the beginning, when we would get a client, I would tell my guys, for this next three months, six months, however long the project is, we need to kill ourselves to provide better service than they've ever received from anyone in the history of time. That's the way we're going to establish ourselves. Not only does that build our confidence, but the network talks, the network talks. So a perfect example of this, I got a, I got a call last week from the general counsel of a very large company in Toronto. And he said, Hey, I, can you come in? I want to talk to you. And, and you know, I want to, uh, I wanna talk about your product. I didn't know him. I'm not connected with him on LinkedIn, just randomly. So I went in, I met with him last week. And the first question I asked him was, hey, how'd you hear about us? And he said, um, well, you know, um, we're, we're looking for a contract management solution. Um, so I called my friend, who's the general counsel for all, one of our biggest, biggest clients. And, and he, and the general counsel told me to watch a couple of your videos. So I went on LinkedIn. I'm not connected to him. He looked at my profile. He watched a couple of my videos and said, okay, this guy seems to know what he's talking about. He said, so that's why I called you. And after that, our conversation was not about who I am or what I do. It's okay. Let's talk about your problem. How can we solve it? Right. And we're probably going to bring these guys on as a client uh, fairly soon. So the confidence will get there. The trick is you have to keep going. Um, and, and yeah, in the beginning, it'll feel like you shouldn't be in the room. Um, and that's okay. Right. Uh, you just got to keep pushing forward. I mean, there's, there's really, that's all there is to it. Just to add on to that, to that point about, you know, building your expertise in the network and then getting the network to work for you. So now what happens is you have this network, they recognize your expertise some of the people in the network become your clients. Well, that network now is going to refer you to other people that they, to their network. So it's, it's, it's exponential, right? So they know people that you don't know. And those people, if they're looking for something, you always want to do business with the people you know. And if it's not the people you know, it's the people you know. People, um, it's the people who <laughs> you know who know other people, right? So it's that kind of second degree. Um, the most difficult sale to make is with somebody who you don't know and they don't know you and you have no common ground. But with that network, now you have this common ground, that second level. 
And honestly, if you're really a good expert and your content is good on LinkedIn, you don't even have to do the selling. They sell it for you, right? Everybody's looking for something. And if you're the expert in this very niche thing, they're gonna come to you. Plus, if you have content on LinkedIn, well, that content is all there. It's in one place, it's curated. So now somebody can just point to your profile and say, hey, you, you wanna know about IT procurement, Go check out this guy's profile. He's got a bunch of videos on there and some written stuff. Um, I think you'll like what you see. And that's how we got uh, this company. Again, one of the things that benefited me the most was having uh, somebody coach me on, uh, on the marketing aspect, right? I, I know what I'm good at and that's what I focus on. If I try to focus on everything in my business, I'll get nowhere. So I focus on what I'm good at and then I bring in people to help me with the things that I'm not good at. And marketing is not, it's not my forte. Um, the real benefit I saw with boutique growth and then in the 90 day pipeline was I just, I was given the instructions and all I had to do was follow them. I didn't have to overthink it. Right. So if I'm told, okay, you need to make LinkedIn videos and this is how you should structure your content and this is what you need to do. Great, I, I'm the expert, I can create the content, I can do the videos. I don't have to think about, okay, well, how do I market these videos? All of that is given to me. And really those 90 days, it's, it's like, um, it's like a, car, uh, uh, a manual car that won't start. You just need to give it that little shove down the hill. And then once you get going, you pop the clutch and away you go, right? So we all need that, especially when we're starting off as consultants. This is, this is new for most of us. In fact, probably for everyone. We've all worked in industry. Suddenly we wanna be our own independent consultants. There's a lot of things you don't know. So rather than try to figure everything out, find experts, because if you think about it, that's what we're offering to our clients as well. So it makes sense that we would practice what we preach. And that was, my, that was the biggest benefit that I got from, from boutique growth was I didn't have to think about marketing. I was, I was given the instructions, the blueprint, and I just followed.